my legislative report. This is Kathy Watson, state representative for the 144th district. And I think in TV parlance, I would say to you on location, this is probably the best location that I know of I've ever had in the 12 years I've done legislative reports. Because folks, this is on location at the opening of the Route 202 Parkway. Long time coming, long time. Some of the gentlemen here would tell you they've worked on it for 30 to 40 years. I haven't worked on it that long. I'm new at this. I've only been at it since 1985. But it's an exciting day. This is the first road built in Bucks County in over 30 years. And I'm going to introduce you to one of the architects well, really, the engineer for the road. We can't use that word architect. But the man behind it, the man with the plan, and uh, who helped work on this and guide it through, which was no mean trick. And this is Eric Frary, and Eric's a vice president with Michael Baker, Jr., Junior. Inc. So, Eric, why don't you tell them in, like, I don't know how we're going to do this, in <laughs> 60 seconds, in two minutes, 30 years at least worth of history on this roadway. Well, Kathy, uh, thanks again for, for having me. Uh, I've only been with it for 15 years. Um, these gentlemen have certainly been there longer, and uh, I think you gave me too, credit, too much credit. I mean, it, it was definitely a, a team effort. Uh, a lot of people came up with the different concepts, back to the expressway, to the current concept, to the parkway. Um, but it was truly uh, an effort of many to get to this point. So uh, I wish you could. And I guess we should say where we're standing, Eric. Why don't you describe what this is? Well, this is a kind of example of one of the many uh, amenities of this roadway, that the, the multi-use trail, you can see that some of the aesthetic features on the bridge. Um, it's tr truly a, a linear park, um, really to be used by all the residents of, of Montgomery and Bus County. It's not just a roadway, it's, it's more than that. And we've heard from drivers, but I will tell you, probably the biggest lobbyist about when's it going to open, when's it going to open, have been all the folks who bike ride or want to bring their children and walk along the roadway way because we have places for them to park. There's five parking lots throughout uh, the, the nine miles where you can park, unload your bikes, get on the trails, um, and, and actually coincidentally a lot of people actually were kind of wishing we wouldn't open the roadway because they would like to use the roadway and the trail without the cars, but unfortunately we need yes, the road open. Yes, those car drivers <laughs> would like it. That was the point of it all. I guess we should say, Eric, and I know you'll pass the mic, but joining us are really two gentlemen who were the driving forces behind the parkway. Uh, driving is used both ways. They just wanted to ride on it, but they also had vision. They had vision at a time when everybody else just saw farm fields. And actually, when you two gentlemen started, we didn't have the development we had. You were looking and saying, don't think it's going to stay like this, folks. And it really didn't. But you had the vision to say, let's plan for it, which we all know sometimes is unheard of, that we plan for the future instead of just letting the future happen. Mr. Niblock, George Niblock, why don't you, we've worked together, you're the guy who, you and Mr. Cotton got me on board as a private citizen in 1985, so why don't you talk about the early days and what you did? The early days, I worked with George Penglace, who the parkway is now uh, known by, and we wound up understanding the development that was coming within this community and, and surrounding communities and traffic was going to be a major problem. There was congest congestion already at that time. So we garnered up over 5,700 supporters to verify that this was really needed. And we did that, and you can see the need today with the increase in traffic and the congestion on the accompanying roads that uh, hopefully we'll get the relief that that we planned for. Other than that, uh, after 30 years, I can just say thank you, Kathy. It's, it's just a great pleasure today to be standing in a position where the road is ready to go. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, you're welcome. And I guess we should point, if someone hasn't seen, Mr. Niblock, for all of his work, we've named this bridge that we're standing on the George Niblock Bridge. And then we have Mr. Cotton on the end. Now, Mr. Cotton's got a bridge, and he's leading tours to his bridge. We're not there today, but we'll try I to am? get you equal time at a future All at right. a future time, Bob. I'll why don't you? I'll be ready. All right. Why don't you talk about your contributions, which are many, and you're going to have to consolidate like George did, yeah. put them into a minute or two. Well, I started in this uh, program way back in 1969, when I was on the planning commission of New Britain Township, and. Uh, 
we were meeting with all the municipalities in the area trying to determine what the route should be and it was finally settled in a few years afterwards. Things uh, didn't happen too much until the late 80s and the 90s when for the expressway and uh, it went through a whole lot of uh, detail and had a road and a program ready to go but it got delayed by uh, for various reasons and uh, then the money disappeared and the price went up and uh, uh, the uh, Department of uh, Transportation invited us out to uh, uh, Harrisburg to, for a meeting in February, I think it was of uh, 19 or 2004. And uh, he offered to uh, consider building a parkway. And we didn't hear that and it took quite a while to get used to it. But uh, here we are and uh, we were able to participate in the design and all the problems that go with an organ, a road like this. And there were several because there's a lot of municipalities here. And uh, uh, I look at this and I think it's uh, uh, a real asset to us. It doesn't solve the problems, nor would the expressway have solved the problems. And, uh, and the place did grow. And the people that didn't care for this thing said uh, their place grew too. Now they're wishing some things that would have happened. Right. So I think this is a great, great asset, and I think it's a great day to have it happen. That's very good, and you'll hear music in the background because we have the local high school uh, band is out here to celebrate with us, and we all look forward to the driving will begin. You'll start to see cars lining up, waiting for the go-ahead so they can go. But gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for the part you played in this, for getting a parkway built for getting a parkway opened, and I think we will see that it indeed it will improve the quality of life here in Central Bucks County. We're excited about it. We thank the people who aren't here, all those supervisors who for years in Montgomery and Bucks County saved the land and kept the parkway land open so that PennDOT didn't have to go out and spend extra money. So for all those who participated, and probably there's got to be who worked on this really probably a thousand at least uh, that you wouldn't remember all the names we say thank you and I guess we have to thank God for the glorious day we have for an opening rather than standing in the cold wet rain it could be December so this is State Representative Kathy Watson this is probably one of the best legislative reports I've had the opportunity to do I thank you very much for watching <laughs>